Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lined up, a great guest here in the studio. And we'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. High today is not going to be as high as it has been. It's going to be only 73. Got a little cool air coming down out of north. Low tonight will be uh, 56. So it, we got some cool weather coming in. So water temperature dropped down one degree to 79 degrees. Now to take a look at our river readings. We've been talking about this. They're finally getting going down, getting out of the color, we call it. The big rivers right now is reading right at, at 10 foot this morning, but by Saturday morning, it's dropping on down to around really below nine foot they're anticipating about 8.8 .8 by saturday morning and y'all know that's getting that's getting right as old timers would say the chocolate hatch at Caraville, we're looking at right there we, and even it's both of them reading 10 foot this morning and staying there for a couple of days and then uh it's it's not going to really drop out it's just going to stay around 10 for the next three or four days okay take a look at our tithes brought to us by kent forest lawn funeral home and cemetery okay today's high tides we're looking at a uh, high tide at 10.33 this morning and a low tide at 9.07 tonight and we have a uh, 1.8 foot range. Good tides, okay? The marine forecast, well, this cool weather is coming from a northwest direction at 10 to 20. Now it's going to, this weekend, it looks like it's going to be rough offshore. I'm a little concerned about our uh, Wounded Warriors trip tomorrow. We're calling for four to six on Friday and when they call for four to six, you can, you can find some eights in there too. So. We may have to make a, go to a plan B on our, on our Wounded Warrior trip, but we'll just wait and see. All right, let's take our break and we'll be right back. Welcome back and welcome Lieutenant Stan Kirkland. Good morning. Good morning, Winston. How you doing? I'm doing great, buddy. Sit here talking about some fishing stories, but yeah. really right now, I think the first thing people want to know, they've been waiting for you to come on to talk about the bears. So yeah, we've, we've had straight from the horse's mouth. We've uh, we've had enough bears. We hope they go back in the the woods. Uh, we had the big one, you know, that came over on April the fourteenth. Uh, that bear weighed three hundred. Well, uh, based on a chest uh, girth measurement, yeah. he weighed about uh, three hundred and fifty pounds, roughly. Uh, we uh, uh, ordinarily, you know, he was close to two schools. He was close to St. John's Catholic School, also Oakland Terrace Elementary. Uh, we talked to Mike, John's Mike came out, Dr. Healy came out as well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we may, and, and even uh, uh, Mr. Husfeld came out. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyway, we, uh, we decided to get him out of there. We ordinarily, uh, we ordinarily don't like to tranquilize them because there's more things can go wrong yeah. than go right. I mean, everything has to fall in place. Uh, you gotta, you, you know, you want, uh, you want to be able to control and keep people back. You want to, you got to have somebody come in with experience that can shoot a dark gun. Mm -hmm. And some of our equipment is a little older and we're in the process now looking at upgrading some of our dark gun uh, equipment. But you, uh, you also have to account for that because there's a Schedule Three narcotic that we use. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that dart hitting some bystander because if it, do, if it does, uh, then, then uh, that could be a problem. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things that, and a leaf can deflect the dart, a twig can deflect, deflect it, and that's why we like to get in a bucket. Uh, we, and we've been able to call on them. The first case, Freeman Electric. Second case, Gulf Power came out and helped us out. And they, they you know, they were, they've been so gracious. The Panama City Fire Department, uh, Battalion Chief Scott uh, Flitzcraft, his, his people have been, you know, they've been great. And, and you know what's really interesting? And he said, hey, he said, listen, this is good experience for us <laughs> rigging all these ropes and tarps mm -hmm. because he said what happens is, he said if we get somebody that, you know, in a situation and mm -hmm. we need to rig something, he said this, this is great training and we don't have to use yeah. a human uh, as a guinea pig. Well, y'all had so, a lot of backup then, didn't you? Yeah, we had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people helped out, but we, we moved the bear and uh, I'll, I'll be uh, goodness if he didn't come back. And and uh, from that's April what 14, I want to know. How how, what, yeah. how did he come back almost in the exact area? He was within two blocks. But that's amazing. He's probably coming to the coast. Uh, we took him uh, the first time. Of course, we we took him to uh, the middle of the Apalachicola National Forest, almost between 
Uh, if you draw a line between Tallahassee and, and Caravelle, he's in an area we call Mud Swamp. And uh, it's, uh, we've only got really two places we can take bears yeah. if, if we decide to relocate them. Some cases we euthanize them, and that's not popular. People don't like that. Yeah. Well, and, and even our own staff, you know, sometimes it's tough. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've got, you know, we euthanize statewide 25 to 30 bears a year mm -hmm. because they fit into a category, either they're aggressive toward people, mm -hmm. and I'm not necessarily saying they're biting, they just are aggressive, they, mm -hmm. and they won't, uh, or they, um, that we've caught them multiple times, they won't stay out of munip municipalities or towns, uh, or they, they break into a home. We've had them actually, uh, you know, some cases they'll, they'll uh, go into a home after food and, or kill pets and that kind of thing. So there's some reasons that we euthanize them. We do on occasion, uh, but uh, in this case we made the decision second time, uh, and we're convinced he went down the coast probably to Tyndall came back across the bay. That's no swim for them. Yeah. Uh, we, we've uh, actually had an officer uh, years ago found one 10 miles off the coast headed toward Cuba. Uh, and he turned him around and followed him all the way back. So he had, the Vera had, uh, had, had gone 20 miles, 10 out, 10 back. And when he, the officer told me when he ran out on the beach, he just ran off like it was nothing. That's and, amazing. Yeah. But so you think he came down from that middle part? He didn't cut across. He sort of came down to the coast and then came up. Well, we we don't know there. if he cut across or how, but he probably came down and and yeah. hit that Tyndall uh, corridor, came mm -hmm. across, and they come across the bay. Every three or four years, we we have one that does this. Just a a couple of years ago, three years ago, I think it was, we had a bear, uh, three or four. We had a bear that came through town. Same thing. Uh, we, he would not climb a tree, mm -hmm. and he crossed uh, just south of Hathaway Bridge, went across to the beach side, mm -hmm. went all the way to Allison Avenue, because people saw him. Yeah. Then he turned around, he decided, hey, I don't like this beach. <laughs> so he turned around and he came back. We had people that, we have a photograph of him uh, on the beach, on the, on the uh, Tyndall's, uh, on the Navy side. He swam back across the bay. We, the last time we saw him, was on the ground at the Panama City Garden Club, and then he disappeared. So what we, we know what happened is he he was through with town, <laughs> so he swam back across the bay and went back to Tyndall, and we never saw him again. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. But this last one, we didn't have to relocate him. He was, uh, uh, Winston, he was about 60, 65 feet up a tree. There's no way to, to one, dart him, number two, uh, if you were successful in dart, darting him, you would have to have the capability to be able to get him out of the tree because about half the time they don't come out of the, they go to sleep up in the tree. Yeah. And then okay. uh, we can't go off and leave him so we because the dart's in him, so we got to physically get our hands on him. And you don't want to put a staff person up there, you'll get somebody killed. Uh, so, yeah. you know, that's why we left him. And he disappeared yesterday. He didn't go in the trap. Yeah. He didn't. Didn't like our offering of sardines and uh, dog food. So. Well, listen, uh, so you all think he's headed back to the woods or something, or you, you don't know? Well, I joked yesterday and said that uh, he may be at Gulf Coast College yesterday, and I, I heard from some folks over there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we don't know where yeah. he is. He, yeah, we, our hope is that he turned around and went back the way he came, that yeah. he decided city life wasn't for him. Uh, but um, I don't know. We, we don't know. Hopefully we won't see him. Hopefully we won't hear from him. <laughs> okay. I know y'all been busy with the bears. I, yes. after I, I, get, I don't get tickled. I just get amused because I know you guys are hopping around when Well, when it's a big effort in the community yeah. and the schools. They're really nervous now. You know, we yeah. kids, they don't want a bear running around on campus, obviously. So well, it I is think, a concern. You know, I would think that the uh, high-risk high place would be a place like Tyndall Elementary. All those woods out there. Oh, they, well, know. they've had them before around there, um, but you know they're kind of used to it. They're fenced. Yeah. Um, they do call us if they see one. But yeah. Tyndall has their own people now. Their natural resource people can handle their bear calls. So. Well, you know, I, I, I get tickled again because that's where my son Chip teaches PE right. at Tyndall right. Elementary, and I always ask him if he's seen any bears lately. And <laughs> I, I said, make sure those kids are safe if you get between the bears and right. the kids. <laughs> that's right. All right, yeah. let's take a break. We'll be right back. Now, right, welcome back, folks. We're here with Stan Kirkland. We're talking about the bears, and it's sort of wrap it up now. There's yeah. still some stuff going on. So, well, Winston, the only thing I was going to mention is we've got a uh, statewide uh, survey, a bear survey uh, count, if you want to call it that, that's coming up. 
uh, in 2014, in uh, I believe June and July, uh, we're going to be over about a six week period, we'll be doing the uh, count in uh, three areas in north central Florida, not in the Panhandle. Uh, the, it will not be done in the Panhandle until uh, 2015, about the same time, in other words, summer, okay. a year from now. And the way this works is uh, we've got staff people plus, we've got some, uh, 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 we've got a college that's coming in that's going to be helping us. I think some extra help coming in, but you, you set up a lot of uh, uh, what they're called uh, barbed wire uh, 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 snares. Okay. Or a bob you put barbed wire around trees in about a 10 by 10 enclosure. You have several strands of barbed wire. You have a bait station in the middle of it. And then what you do is a staff person goes there once a week and collects the hair where that bear goes through that wire to get to that uh, scent. Uh, then you collect the hair for the DNA, and all that DNA okay. has to be sent to a lab. And so you have wow. multiple, you d we're doing this on public land and private land. The last time we did this was just public land. That was in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, then the population we estimated was somewhere around 3,000 animals, but we believe that it's, it's, it's higher now, but we obviously, it's higher, but we just don't yeah. know what the numbers will show, okay. but that's coming up. Okay, very good, right. very good. and. Uh, and we'll know more about that then as it Yeah, we won't have the results until probably late in 2015 or either uh, probably uh, more, more realistically early in 2016 because there's a lot of, not, not only do you have to do the lab part, the mm -hmm. genetics part to see how many individual bears are coming, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you also have to uh, do the, the statistical part of it mm -hmm and to, to calculate, and there's some formulas that this is done in other states. Florida didn't invent this, right. but we're using what's done in other states okay. to, to count bears. You can't count them individually because the bears are too secretive, they're too low to the ground, they don't come out, um, well, usually they yeah. don't come out, but anyway. So. All, right, all right, let's switch subject now. Yeah. Something else that really, uh, our viewers are really right. highly interested in, that's a, that's a red snapper. Right. What's the, what's the latest on the red snapper situation? Well, of course, you know, Winston, we've got the commission set, our commission set a 52-day uh, season. It begins on June the 1st. That's just around the corner. I know. You know, we, it's going to be here before you can blink. And uh, everybody's looking forward to that. There's a lot of snapper. That season only applies, though, to state waters. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, uh, NOAA, uh, through, uh, through their rulemaking process, established only an 11-day season. And now there's all these rumors flying around. I asked one of our staff people yesterday about that, that, that um, they may reduce their season. But I, I haven't seen anything. Uh, it, it's just incomprehensible to me that they would reduce it from 11 days to, to something else in federal waters. But yeah. uh, we can't control that. All we can control is what uh, is done in state waters. And, and uh, our people are uh, yeah. geared for that. So. Okay, so we just don't, uh, right now, we're just going to go right. with what we have. So. Yeah, and, uh, you know, people should fish and uh, take full advantage of not only state, but the federal waters while it's open. Okay. I would encourage them to take full advantage of it, and uh, hopefully the weather will be better. You know, last year, the weather mm -hmm. uh, kind of turned sour. I think it was in uh, July, mm -hmm. uh, we're right around the first, of, uh, maybe late June, first of July, you know, we, we had uh, almost 20 inches of rain here. And, yeah. And it just never, never stopped after that. Okay. All right. Now we got a couple minutes for the break. Now you were more than mention something about uh, gators. Yeah, uh, we are already in the uh, gator application uh, uh, time period. If you want to apply to participate mm -hmm. in the 2014 in, uh, Florida alligator hunting season, uh, this is not for commercial trappers or, or trappers who who work with us already. This is for everyday individuals that want to participate. And so you apply, uh, now's the time to apply. When those permits are gone, there won't be any more permits. So, uh, but uh, I think we're, we're, uh, we've just concluded phase one, but there are phase two, uh, are permits available in phase two, so people can still get permits. It's, uh, so um, Florida has the most liberal alligator hunting season yeah. uh, of all of the states that have a hunting season with the exception of Louisiana. And Louisiana has obviously 
uh, with their swamps and the, the lower half of the state or mm -hmm. lower third of the state, they have many more alligators than we do, but mm -hmm. or, or, or opportunities than we do. But um, we we have a very liberal season, and uh, actually, one thing that uh, our staff was talking about recently or looking at is we've had fewer incidents with alligators biting people. Um, since we went to a more expanded season. Oh, that's that's great. I mean, yeah, yeah really that is. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, and, uh, yep, it All is. Right. Let's take our final break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Sitting here with Lieutenant Stan Kirkland from the Fish and Wildlife Commission. Always glad to have him. He's always just has so much information. But before we get back to Stan, let's look at our fishing game forecast today. Brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty. His number is 832. 6,000. We're looking this uh, afternoon, 135 to 335, and tomorrow morning at 106 a.m. to 306 a.m. So put those times and uh, try to take advantage of it. Now, don't forget tonight, right here, Northside Baptist Church, right on Airport Road, is right down the road from here from the studio. They're having a big Low Country Shrimp Bowl. It's going to start at 5 o'clock. The dinner's going to be at 6. Come by and see everyone, and uh, they're going to have some prizes to give away. I'm going to give away one of my books, and they allowed me the honor to speak to them a short period of time, so I am looking forward to it. So y'all try to see us tonight at Northside Baptist Church with the Iron Men Group, okay? Now, uh, we were talking about gators, and but also uh, mm -hmm. we've covered bears, snapper, gators, and you mentioned something about sturgeon, so we're going to get all these. Yeah, there we go. What's all the on? critters. <laughs> all well, these, one thing sport. I was going to mention is that uh, one thing that's a concern every year about this time when the water uh, starts to recede is, is uh, our sturgeon are coming back in our, our rivers. They're already here. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Frank uh, Peruca. I don't know if you've ever had Frank on, we but have. Frank is, he is a, he knows more, he's forgotten more about sturgeon than, than, um, than most of I us call, would I ever call know. him Mr. Sturgeon. I'm <laughs> telling you, he is, Frank is a character, uh, and I love Frank yeah. to death. But Frank, I talked to Frank last week, um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Of course, Frank retired. He's back working with them mm -hmm. on a contract basis. But they're, they're still, still doing all their work with sturgeon and tagging and some uh, modeling on, uh, on uh, numbers and all this sort of stuff. But, but one thing we were talking about is uh, with the water getting back down, uh, you know, when you're in these rivers, particularly the Choctahatchee River, mm -hmm. uh, the Yellow River, uh, back over toward uh, Blackwater, but but particularly the Choctahatchee, we've got more fish and more sturgeon in the Choctahatchee than any other river in the Panhandle, with the exception of the Suwannee River. Now, in the Suwannee River, the numbers are through the roof. I think they estimate that population at somewhere uh, 12 to 14 thousand sturgeon are in the Suwannee, wow. but in in the Choctahatchee, I think they estimate. I think he told me was somewhere uh, just over 3,000 fish. Mm -hmm. But these are big fish. For some reason, they jump. And uh, you just don't want to be in a small boat and uh, catch one. Have scientists ever figured out what makes them jump? Well, Frank told me the other day, I asked him that question. He said there's two theories. He said um, one of the prevailing theories is, uh, and I'm not sure if I remember both of them now, Winston, but one of the theories is it's a form of communication. And he said, um, the, uh, he said the, oh, uh, I do remember the other one. One is a, a form of communication. They jump and they can, other fish can, can hear that. Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, they, they, he said they'll all be in a certain area and I'm not sure what they're trying to communicate. The other thing he said is the theory is that when they jump, they also inflate their air bladder uh, that, uh, you know, inside of them. Okay. They have this air bladder and he said it, that may, that may be part of the reason, but beyond that, yeah. no one really knows. But uh, we've had some horrible injuries over on the Swanee River, mm -hmm. uh, not so much in the last year or two. And of course, this time last year, um, a young kid was hit in a boat on the Choctahatchee and seriously injured, yeah. and I think had to be life to uh, yeah. Sacred Heart Hospital in Pensacola. I believe the youngster uh, recovered, uh, yeah. but uh, was, was, was critically injured. So. Anyway, just something, when you go out on these rivers, uh, with them getting down right now, particularly Choctahatchee Point is, just go slow, don't, you know, when you go busting up the river, if a fish comes out and 
some of these fish can weigh up to a couple of hundred pounds. It can be dangerous. Yeah, they're, they're all big. We've been out with them before and, and netted them and, and, and tagged right. them and all. Really, uh, it's very informative. And it's, a, it's a prehistoric creature. I mean, right. They're, they're really amazing fish. Yeah, and, fr and Frank was telling me they've got, um, they're now using side scan sonar okay. and some of these places they're able to take these small handheld side scan sonar units mm -hmm. and they can literally see the fish uh, down in these deep holes and it tells them where to, mm -hmm. you know, where to uh, set their nets when they're tagging them and all this. And yeah. one of the things that's so fascinating to me is back in the 1800s, the commercial fishermen and of course things were different then. They lived off of, uh, a lot of people lived off eating sturgeon and they trapped them by the tens of thousands, yeah. particularly the Suwannee River. And there was a viable commercial fishery over there for many, many years until that sturgeon fishery collapsed. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but anyway, different time and yeah. uh, it was tough times then. Well, all right, we got a, got a couple minutes left now. Let's get, uh, personally, have you been able to do any fishing? Or you, are you, I know you wrapped up turkey season and all, so uh, you got your fishing season coming up. Well, I've, uh, Winston, I, I have not been uh, nearly as successful as some people I've talked to. I haven't, uh, I've only been a couple of times and just haven't uh, had too much luck. But uh, I've caught, the last time I went, I caught a couple of small flounder, but okay. nothing of any size. But, and uh, uh, one of your favorite ways of fish is wade fishing, isn't it? You enjoy yeah, fishing? I enjoyed that. I got started with a, a friend when I moved here back in the uh, 70s. A mm -hmm. um, friend introduced me to it, and it's just a, you know, pretty low impact way to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, biggest thing is just uh, trying to figure out the tides and when fish are there and, uh -huh. and that sort of stuff. Sometimes it, you know, you find a lot of fish and other times you don't, but it's a pretty low impact way to go. All so. right. Well, Stan, as always, that's so much good information you share with the viewers and all. We always well, appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Winston, and for what you do, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Folks, I was, thank you for watching Panhandle Outdoors now. We've got a big show lined up tomorrow, and we have our uh, famous Friday fishing forecast for us. We're going to, uh, well, that's going to be coming up uh, Friday, but we're going to have some good stuff on it, okay? And also drawing for some uh, free seafood. Thank you for watching Panhandle Outdoors. Do something good for someone else, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.